Welcome to the Wiggly Podcast. We're back. Or well, Monty's gone, like whichever <laughs> way you want to look at it. Yeah, Monty's back at school. Welcome back, dear listener, to the Wiggly Podcast. We've had our summer holidays. Hope you've had yours. I'm Heather, and I'm joined today by... Farmer Phil. ...in the cow shed, and we're going to have a look at the crops that have been gathered in. But first of all, how is the calf that we spoke about a few weeks ago? Absolutely fine. Still not very large, but he's out in the field with his mum and doing well, all in order. And actually, we've got another one who I suspect had the same origins, was one of a twin. Other twin didn't survive, and they were both a bit premature, but he's doing well, or she's doing well, I should say. But obviously, she's quite small, living inside for a minute. And his, his dad... Our Hereford bull. No, that's he's or oh, she's by penguin. Interestingly, they're both by penguin, but I don't think that's significant. I think that's just the luck of the draw. And Trojan Fred's offspring. Trojan Fred's offspring, all in apple pie order. Okay, so you're going to feed the cattle. Yeah, we're just. Why feeding. are you feeding them? And it's the middle of summer. Well, we've got very little grass. Very little grass indeed. We're still very dry. I know that's a fateful thing to say, but uh, we are. And these are a few cows who are late to calve, and this Abigail is one of them. Hello, Abigail. Plus one or two who've got injuries, or we've got one with a dislocated stifle joint. Probably what happened was Adin the bull was getting at her when she was in an awkward position, and she dislocated her stifle. Getting at her? No, you're definitely oh, getting I at see. her. And I'm afraid that that is a non-repairable injury but she's all right just hobbling around in the paddock while she's got her calf, which is here in front of you. Isn't that cruel, because she must be in pain? She's not in huge pain, because what happens is that it forms a new joint out of sort of gristle, but it means that the leg never works right because all the geometry's gone wrong again, and she'd be very prone to injury. But she's quite happy. She's there. You haven't seen which one it is. And as our now retired vet used to say, she wouldn't probably appreciate the option at this point. So, And so will she have another calf in her, or will you actually...? No, I think she'll probably have to go, because she is very lame. If Even if she is in calf, as she gets heavier and heavier, it will, it will become difficult for her. So sometime this autumn, I'm afraid she will have to go. And then what will she go for? Will we eat her, or...? Uh, She will probably go as a casualty because she'll have to be slaughtered on the farm because she wouldn't be considered fit enough to go to the abattoir. I see. And what does that mean? Does that mean we can eat her? No, she'll she'll go to be burned, effectively. Why can't we eat her? Because she's a cow, and if she was 100% as a cold cow, she would have gone to make pies or processed meat. Pies? You can't make the best beef out of cows. I see. Uh, Now, we're just walking down the yard because... Uh, let's think. So you've been harvesting basically for a whole month. Yep. Because you started, I think, first second of August. Yep. And now today is the second of September when we're recording yep. this. And when I came out to record the first harvest report, which you can find, dear listener, at www.wigglywigglers.co.uk, and then click on the link at the bottom called our blog, and you'll find our video casts which I think there's four or five throughout the summer of Farmer Phil harvesting. But this combine at that point was the most pristine, (laughs) clean, massive machine. And you, in the space of four weeks, have reduced it to a grubby-looking, humble, dirty, scuffed... It's not scuffed. Well, what's that on the front, all that? That's where the header fix is on. That's scuffed. No, well, that's where it moves about. Where it, well, where the paint's just, come off. Well, yes, yeah, that's because it's shiny. If that was our car, there'd be a row <laughs> when I backed it into whatever it was again. <laughs> mm. Now, well, the reason it's so dirty is because we've just finished harvesting the peas, yep. which are particularly dusty numbers because of the amount of soil involved. They're very close to the ground, and most of what you're looking at is soil. Is uh, it? Which is either on the horn or we've got bits of dirt in with the peas as well but it cleans it out but it's very very dusty so when people see all that dust around the combine i thought that was disease and fungi when you watch a combine out in a field and it's it's all a mixture of all of those things but but are you saying it's really dirt 
in the case of peas, it's soil. If right. it's been very rainy, it can also be soil because the rain splashes the dirt up the plant so it gets on the straw. But equally, if it's been rainy, you can get wheat particularly starts to go black at this time of year. It doesn't affect the yield, but that dust is actually fungus moulds and sooty moulds and smuts and things like that. No harm to anything. It doesn't improve the quality of the straw much, but you'll see some of that dust coming off it. But hopefully, if we've got our fungicides right, there shouldn't be too much disease dust. OK, let's go and have a look at the crops in the shed and find out what happens to them next. But first of all, let's just call into the floristry and ask Ricky about the sunflowers. You join me in the Wiggly Floristry where Heidi's doing all the clearing up and Ricky's. What are you doing, Rick? Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, tell us about the jigsaw flowers that you've been doing. Oh, yes, we've been supplying jigsaw shops with flowers. They're beautiful. We've put cabbages in them this week. Cabbages? All the English cabbages. Really? They were very nice. And, and you went up to see the manager in Chester, yeah, I Yeah, she was lovely. Really nice girl. Where were the flowers? Because jigsaw is, well, it's sort of upmarket, trendy, women's shop, isn't it? Yes, yeah, very expensive. 43 very of nice. them, owned by a farmer. Uh, so, um, yes, you went to yeah, Chester. Yeah, we went to see them. I said to my husband, I must call in and see the flowers. Yeah. And they were on the counter right by the till area. Absolutely stunning they were. They looked beautiful. And did you tell her that you'd made them? Uh, oh, well, of course. <laughs> she said, can I help you, madam? I said, yes, I made those. <laughs> so, no, they looked lovely and really nice staff up there, very friendly. And we've also been doing boxes of sunshine. Uh, that's sunflowers, isn't it? Yes. Grown by Farmer Phil, who just went in and out of the floristry yeah. laughing. We've got a whole field full of absolutely stunning, and I would encourage everybody to grow sunflowers in their garden because the amount of ladybirds and bees up there is amazing. The amount of tweets and emails that we've had in saying thank you very much for the box of sunshine with the free ladybird mm. that they've relocated into their garden. So, mm. yeah, they're lovely, aren't they? Until I've been up there, I honestly haven't seen a ladybird in my garden. Really? Yet. No, I haven't. There's loads so, on them. They seem to go in the back, into the, don't yes, they? Into and, the, so, and the bees hmm. are so... Mind you, come the afternoon, the bees aren't so nice because I think they're full of pollen and they can't fly, but it's a stunning sight to see. Lovely. Thank you, Rick. And what are you on today? Any weddings? Yes, we've got a very important wedding tomorrow that Heather Gorringe is going to and her family. Oh, yes! <laughs> yes. We've got That's right. We've got buttonholes to make for that. Congratulations, Adrian and Imogen. Please, can oh. I have a buttonhole? You certainly can. Thank you very much. Thanks. OK, so we've walked round to the grain stores and unusually all the wooden bits are up the front to hold the crop in. So yep. usually we come out and you can walk straight into the floor and look at the bokashi or whatever it is. So oh. those are obviously to get more in. Yeah, they are the front of the bin which allows us to actually fill the bin. They're made up of panels that slide into the steels of the building. So when we unload the bin, we get the grain out from behind them, over the top of them, then take the panels out and then we can drive in and out of the bin. But the, the point of it is that we use the whole building so that when we fill the building, you know, we can use every, every square foot of the building. So what's that big heap of stuff in there? That's peas. They're vining peas for seed. Let's have a look at them so then. Can you get us some? Yeah. So I'll climb up the front. Are you safe? The noise you can hear in the background is us blowing air through them, both to condition them, cool them down, and to dry any bits of green horn or any green peas in them. Because we'll keep these now until Christmas time, because they won't be needed until they're planted in the spring, because they're a spring planted crop. Well, they look rubbish, Gov, because no, they're, they're all they're beautiful. They're shriveled no. hard. Oh, you can't eat those. No, <laughs> you're not going to eat these. <laughs> Although, interestingly, this would be a very good sample to go for canning. Oh, right. Because the colour is so good and there's no stain on them. Oh, um, really? So, what, so you could actually put these in a can, add water, yeah. and they would become... Processed peas, as in canned peas. Uh, would they become mushy peas if no, you mush them? No, they're a particular variety, mushy peas. Oh. These could become canned peas 
and interestingly I mean they don't appeal to me much at all but canned peas are harvested dry like this and then they add everything back that you've just allowed to dry out so they put the colour back they put the water back they put everything back and then they put it back in a can. <laughs> I, I do like a good canned pea myself. <laughs> well, well, anyway. so, Why are some of them yellow or golden and some of them green? I think that's just the luck of the draw. But the point is they're an even colour, each pea is. The fact that they're shriveled doesn't matter. And these will be planted next spring for green crop harvest. So that they will be vining peas which are harvested green and they go into the freezer as your frozen peas then. So had you and I have gone out to our pea field at exactly the right moment, could we have had our own peas? We could, but I don't advertise this very much because otherwise you get a lot of people raiding them. <laughs> and actually, these are best when they're just forming in the pod, eaten raw, because they're really small and really sweet. And you have told me this on the 2nd of September, and when would they have been beautiful to eat? Oh, about June time, I think. <laughs> Thanks so much for that, Farmer Phil. OK, so they're in the shed, and this morning, well, every single morning, loads of lorries turn up. Yep, well, we've well what been... size lorries are they, and they, what do they do? They take 30-odd tonne ago, and we've been sending the barley, the winter barley out, seed barley, so that needs to go out first because the farmers are wanting to plant that again. Oh, I see. So that's Where gone, does it go? Then? It's gone back to the seed company where they'll clean it, dress it, certify it and bag it. I thought you could do all that. I can do it with grass seed, but I'm not set up to do it with cereals. But they'll do that and then it'll go back out onto farms all around the country and be planted again. So, if you are a farmer planting barley, what chance have you got of having farmer fills? Well, if you're a seed grower and you're planting basic or C1 saffron or cassia, it's a very high chance that it's my barley. Wow! So if you're listening, dear farmers, and you're growing that, can you send us a few photos in of how it's doing? I don't know. I'm not sure about that. OK, and over in this shed, we've got bales of grass seed straw. Yeah. Are they... Well, this shed was empty, wasn't it? Yeah, so this is the straw left from when we combined the grass seed. So we, we thrashed the seed out of the head, just like a cereal. And this is the straw that's left. It's a little bit like hay, a bit more consistent than hay. This year, all straw has been an extremely short supply. Because we've been so dry, we've got very low yields of straw so we're and we've lost our main hay and straw dealer we have lost our main hay and straw yeah, dealer we're very well. sorry michael that ball, michael ball almost, died almost a legend in his own lifetime yes, and definitely. now he's certainly a legend i would think and if you want to know who michael ball was and um, we used to call them another load of balls from madley but they're actually called balls of madley and if you look them up, you'll see. And uh, he was really was quite famous in these parts for dealing in all sorts of things, from apple juices, when juicing was not in fashion at all, to rock salt. I think he was the country's biggest importer and seller of rock salt. Yeah. Which is no mean feat, really. And yeah. rock salt is used as a natural lick for cattle. What, um, why? What does that do for them? Well, cattle like salt, and it's good for them. They need a certain amount of salt. Rock salt is a, a good natural way of giving them salt and other minerals that are within it. So this is worth a fortune, but you're not going to sell it? No, this is for our cattle, and we're quite relieved we've got enough in the shed for our cattle. We're just baling the last of it now over at Whitfield. Quality is very good, quantity minimal. And we're very short of bedding straw, um, just by virtue of drought. And all our fields in Herefordshire, instead of looking their normal, gorgeous, dark green, are a sort of yellowy-brown colour. I cannot remember the last time that I went round the county and saw so much brown and yellow. It is that people are starting to run very short of food for the stock. And the irony of it is, is that normally we're quite a wet area of the country, and this year we're about the only area of the country that's had a very dry time. The rest of the country have had a miserable summer and they've had rain and But storms. look at the pluses, Phil. It gives you something to moan about. I'm not moaning. <laughs> I'm very happy. Now, I've got to let you go because, of course, your new media career is beckoning. Absolutely. You've got much bigger fish to fry than the Wiggly podcast. No, I don't know about that. It's all happening today on the farm.
Radio 4 are coming again. <laughs> Farming today? Yeah. With? All I know is that her name is Kaz. Fantastic. And what's it about? What's um, the story? Give it the Wiggly podcast the heads the up. The story Bill. is about seed production and why farmers should embrace using certified seed rather than saving their own. Long story short, it's basically because what they then sow is what it says on the bag. Whereas if they save their own seed, it drifts and it gets contaminated and they're not sowing what they think they're sowing. Get out of it. Certification is about money for big boys. It is it's a, about, it is about tying money. up the market in knots. It is, no, it's not about tying up the market in knots. It, if you research new varieties of, say, wheat and produce wheat that uses less fungicides, produces more yield or fulfills a particular purpose, like making a nice loaf of bread, that research costs money. Each of these varieties that we grow as pre-basic has cost about a million pounds to get to the point of us sowing pre-basic seed. Now, somebody has to pay for that research. Now, if you use home save seed, admittedly you pay the royalty, but you are not really contributing to the seed breeders finding new varieties which improve the thing ah, both for farmers. So and it's like downloading music from a store that's not paying royalties. A little bit, but the farm save seed pay royalties, but not at a very high rate. But the real point is that. Nowadays, we spend so much growing the crop, the seed is not a huge cost given what you're going to spend on it. And the important thing is to think in terms of using the most up-to-date varieties because they will be more disease and pest resistant, therefore you can use less fungicides and so on on them, and they will give a product which you can market more effectively so that it has better chance of having value-added homes, if you like, after. On the other hand, if you use farm safe seed, you're not transporting it from here to the other side of the country to get it cleaned, bagged and then sent back to you. You're actually cutting down on transportation and environmental costs. A little bit, but you plant about 100 weight and a half, so 75 kilos an acre of seed, which isn't a vast amount. You know, a lorry load of seed will do most farms one lorry load. So. But in Oregon, we learned that the grass seed farmers in Oregon, they don't look at it like you do at all. They look at it like this. The customer wants a green lawn. Therefore, we will provide a green lawn. We don't care what it is apart from that. Several differences in Oregon, and they were specifically talking about grass seed, but their customer thinks in terms of a disposable lawn. So they want something to plant so it's green. It will then die due to lack of water in the summer and then they want next year to plant it again. So that it's specifically for amenity grass production and basically they want anything that will come up green quickly. It lasts a couple of months, then the owner kills it through not watering it and then they'll have some fresh next year. So it's a different market, but it does demonstrate that they're producing something for the market, which is the importance of farming really. If you don't produce what the market wants, the days are gone when you can expect it just to take it away. Nowadays we have to produce what people want to buy. And on that note, Farmer Phil, have fun with Radio 4. How do we find you on Twitter? At Farmer Phil, with no E. Lovely. And you can find me at Wiggled on Twitter. And if you want to go to our website for lovely goodies, it's www.wigglywigglers.co.uk. We've got a new checkout, which means you can choose the delivery day of your flowers and of your goodies. And also, our new catalogue comes out on the 9th of September. So if you don't receive one by the 15th, give us a ring and we'll pop one out to you. Have a great week. It's great to be back. Thanks for listening. Bye from me. And bye from me.